right, y'all, welcome to another lesson here with me, Brian at Nurse Hub. And today, our lesson is going to be going over even and odd rules. Let's go. Hey, everybody, welcome to the even and odd rules lesson on the T's math course with me, Brian. So we're going to go over a few of these rules today, so let's jump right in. All right, our goal for this lesson is that we will be able to apply the rules of even and odd numbers to determine outcomes. So we may not actually be using any real numbers today, but part of our understanding of numbers is to know how numbers work together. So without using real numbers, we should be able to determine what would happen or what type of number we'd get at the end of any problem we do. Key vocabulary. So one, we have even numbers that are numbers that are evenly divisible by two. So the rule is that they end in two, four, six, eight, or zero. So no matter how many we get here, one, two, three, four, five, no matter, say we have a five digit number, as long as this ending number ends in a two, four, six, eight, or zero, that is totally fine. So we could have one, 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 four. And that's going to be an even number because what it ends in. So this ending number is what is most important. Opposite for odd numbers. So numbers that are not evenly divisible by two. That's what makes something odd. And these numbers end in one, three, five, seven, or nine. Again, end in. So if we take that same example, say we have a four digit number, we could have had six, eight, four, and if it ends in a one here, that number is still going to be an odd number. Check it out. You could, you could take any odd number, try to divide it by two. It's never going to work as long as it ends in a one, three, five, seven, or nine. You may hear the word integer, and that's just going to be another name for a whole number. Again, whole numbers are going to be numbers that have no decimal pieces, so four, Seven, eight thousand six hundred twenty-eight, two million one hundred twelve thousand eight hundred forty-seven, eighty-three, one. All of these are integers because they are whole numbers that have no decimal pieces. All right, let's get into our key points. So for number one, for every pair of odd numbers, when added or subtracted, makes an even number. If an odd amount of numbers are added or subtracted, the answer will be odd. So what does that even mean? When we talk about pair, that means multiples of two. So if we have an even amount of odd numbers, it's going to be an even number. But if we have an odd amount of numbers, then the answer will be odd. But let's look at if we have an even amount of odd numbers, or we have an odd amount. So for example, if we have seven plus three, seven's odd, three is odd, but we put them together, it's even because it ends in a zero. So this was an even amount because we had two numbers. So this would work with anything. So say we had uh, any set. So 5 plus 1 plus 7 plus 9. So 5 plus 1 is 6 plus 7 is 13 plus 9 equals and that's going to be 22. How do we check? So this is a pair of 2. This is a pair of 2 which means our answer is going to be even and it is. 22 is an even number because it ends in a 2. So if you have pairs of odd numbers or an even amount of odd numbers, they are always going to going to give you an even number. The opposite is true for an odd amount of numbers. So let's take the same ideas above. So we know seven plus three was equal to 10, but if I add another five, that's going to give me 15. So this is a pair of odd numbers, but then we have this one is left out, which means it's going to end in an odd number so this number is going to be odd. Same thing if we had, say, 9 plus 1 plus 7 plus 7 plus 3. 
and that would equal, that's 10, 20, 27. So if we looked at pairs again, that's pair one. We have a second pair, but we don't have a pair for the three, which means that our number is going to end in an odd number. The whole number is odd. Okay, so let's look at our key points here, and we are going to provide some examples on the next slide. So number three, if you multiply or divide an even number by an odd number, the answer is always going to be even. So if an even number is involved in any multiplication or division with odd numbers, your answer is always going to be even. You could prove this to yourself. Try it out. So I'm going to show you a few examples on the next slide, but if you're ever confused, just try it out. And four, if you're multiplying and dividing only odd numbers, that means the problem only includes odd numbers, then your answer is going to be odd. So that's the way that you're going to get odd numbers in your answers. So let's look at some examples. So three, we see that we have an even number involved in the process, and four is what happens when we have odd numbers only. So let's look at if we have five times six. So we know five is going to be an odd number, six is an even number, multiplied together we get 30, which is also going to be an even number. So let's look at what if we have two odd numbers in a problem. So say we have seven times nine times two, what does that equal? So you know, we have seven, which is odd, nine, which is odd, and two, which is even. So seven times nine is going to be 63. Notice that's an odd number. Times two is going to give me 126. And in a six, so our number is even. So if an even number is involved at all in multiplication, even division, because we know it's the opposite, you're still going to get an even number. Now, another thing to pay attention to is that we usually don't use division for these rules because it doesn't always work out. If you wanted to look at your division rules and what happened, we could look at what we saw over here. So if we looked at some division rules... And say we worked backwards. So say we did in 30 divided by 6 equals 5. 30 divided by 5 equals 6. So in this case, we had an even number divided by an even number gave us this time an odd number. 30 divided by 5 is an even number divided by an odd number gives us an even number. Also know that if we did something like 30 divided by 2 equals, actually let's use a different number than that. So if we did 40 divided by 2 equals 20, that's a case that we're even divided by even equals even. So we really don't say anything that could happen when you do when you have an even number in front or when you're dividing two even numbers. Because if you notice, in this case, even and even gave you an odd even divided by even gave you even. So we don't have a specific rule for that. That's probably not going to show up. But we do have something that happens when you have odd numbers involved. So if we look at having odds only, let's do something like 3 times 5. That's going to give me 15. So that's odd times odd equals odd. Same idea if I reversed it in either way. 15 divided by 3 equals 5. We have odd divided by odd equals odd. So if you have only odd numbers involved, everything is going to stay odd. So again, what if we did 5 times 9 times 3? So 5 times 9 is 45 times 3 is going to give me 135. Again, odd. So odd times odd times odd equals odd. So with multiplication, the one guarantee that you can say when you have odd numbers involved is that if it's only odd numbers, everything is going to be odd every time. Why do we do this? So one way we get stronger with math is to really understand our number sense and the rules. So we have to be able to check if our answers make sense, if they're reasonable, if we might have done it the right way. So this means that when we get an answer, we really have to have strong factual knowledge to determine if that answer makes sense. So you'll hear me say, like, does your answer make sense? And a lot of us say yes without knowing what that means. When we have a strong understanding of numbers and their relationships, 
it makes it easier for us to know if our answers make any sense at all. So we're going to jump into two sample questions just to go over these together. As always, see if you can do these on your own, then jump in to see if your answer is correct. All right, so let's jump into sample question number one. It says, if two odd integers and one even integer are multiplied together, which one of the following could be the product? So if we look, we know that we have two odd integers being multiplied by one even integer. So let's choose multiply is also our keyword. So let's choose two odd integers. I actually like to use real numbers just to see what happens. Otherwise, we get lost in like a philosoph philosophical conversation, philosophical. Whew. You can tell words are not my favorite. So two odd integers, let's just choose. Let's do something like three times five, and we have our even integer. Uh, let's make it something easy. Let's do four. And they're being multiplied. Now, order in multiplication does not matter. So therefore, this isn't going to be an issue of, oh, this odd number came before the even number, so it changes rules. Not at all. That's not what's going to happen here. So let's just work our way down the line. We have 3 times 5 is 15. And if we do 15 times 4, that's going to equal 60. Now if we look at 60, it ends in a 0, so that means it's going to be even. If you want to check a few out, so even if you did something real quick, real small, like 3 times 5 times 2. Again, another one. That would still give you 30, still even. So again, same thing's going to happen. You try this out, it's going to be even, so we know that our answer has to be an even number. 17 ends in a 7, that's odd. 35 ends in a 5, that's odd. 24 ends in a 4, that's even, so I'm going to just put a check mark above just in case. And then 85 ends in a 5, odd. Okay, so C is definitely my correct answer. All right, let's look at sample question number two. If three odd numbers and two even numbers are added together, and that sum is divided by an odd number, which of the following could be the quotient? So let's see what we're going to do first. We have three odd numbers, we have two even numbers, and they are being added together. So let's look at that first. It does say, and that sum is divided by an odd number. Some of you may say, but what about order of operations? Notice that this problem is telling us exactly what we're supposed to be doing and exactly the right order in which we're supposed to be doing it. So it does want us to start with adding them together. So let's just choose some. Now, I'm going to do 3 plus 3 plus 5. Those will be my odd numbers. Again, you can choose anything that you want to. Even numbers, let's do 6 and 8. And like we said, we're going to add them all together. So we'd be like, why did you choose these numbers? I'm letting you know it doesn't matter. These numbers are not going to be A, B, C, or D, right? We're using numbers as an example to help us figure out what type of answer are we going to get. This way, we don't get stuck in the philosophical idea of even and odd numbers, but we actually have proof as to what happened. So we have 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 5 is 11 plus 6 is 17, plus 8 is going to give us 25. So notice that 25 right now, we do have an odd number, but we're not done yet. So we found our sum was odd, and then it says that sum is going to be divided by an odd number. So I'm going to choose, we still have 25 from before, and we're going to divide it by an odd number. So 5. Now, say you had a number here that didn't necessarily work for you with an odd number, or it was weird, you couldn't figure it out. Just know that you could choose now any odd number to divide by another odd number. So we know that what happens when odd divided by an odd, 25 divided by 5 is 5, which is also odd. So we know our answer must be odd. I'm not looking for the number 5. It didn't, the problem didn't even give me any numbers. Remember, we used numbers to help us figure out how or what was going to happen. So we know our answer must be odd. We can look at 38 ends in an 8, that's even. 65 ends in a 5, that's an odd number. I'm going to hold off on it just to make sure. 422 ends in a 2, even. 30 ends in a 0, even. Leaving B as our only option that's left. So let's make that a little bit cleaner. 
B is our only option. 65 could be a possible answer in this problem. All right, you have completed another lesson. So congratulations. You should be really proud of yourselves. Now go forth, try this out, see what happens. And I can't wait to see you for another lesson. Good luck. Y'all, that was wild, but congratulations on crushing another lesson here at Nurse Hub. You should be proud and then continue working to make sure you fully understand everything that you just watched. Remember, practice is the only thing that we need to make ourselves better at all of these topics. Good luck, and I hope to see you soon.